Hello, this is Evangelist Dr. Robert L. McKim Sr. from Carrollton, Ohio. Oh, I want to read some scripture first before I talk about some things. So I'm going to Matthew 14 and read to you the account of Jesus feeding the 5,000. Of course, it was more than 5,000. Well, 13, 15, 14 starts here. And then the scripture I'm reading starts in 16. As you can see, it says 5,000. But that's 5,000 men. There was more if you count the women and children. Because it says right here, 5,000 men besides women and children. There were more than 5,000, actually. And Jesus says in 16 to his disciples, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And the disciple said, well, we only have uh, five loaves and two fish. Jesus says, bring them to me. Then he commanded the multitude to sit down in the grass. And he took the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave to the multitude. So they all ate and were filled, and they looked up, and they, excuse me, and they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about like I said, 5,000 men besides women and children. This is supposed to be an account where Jesus took the five uh, loaves of, of bread and two fish and multiplied them so that everybody was able to be fed. Now, Matthew, Mark... Luke, they all give about the same kind of count. And then in uh, John 6, John 6 gives a little different account. John 6 says, One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a lad here who have five barley loaves and two small fish but what are they among so many and like I said this is where I think Jesus multiplied those and so everybody could eat this is the only account where in all the Gospels where it talks about the boy that had the loaves of bread and fish. The other Gospels, like I said, Matthew, Mark, and Luke did not talk about the boy. Why? Probably just thought it wasn't that important. What is important was that everybody was fed miraculously by Jesus blessing the food and it was multiplied. Now Jesus said in uh, Matthew 25 uh, that he will judge the nations. Matthew 25 
starting with 31. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate them from one another, as a shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. And He will set the sheep on His right hand and the goats on His left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, which are the sheep, Come, you blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and gave you drink? When did we see you a stranger and took you in or take you in? Or naked and clothed you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, As surely I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, which are the goats, those that says, you know, basically, but, 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 depart from me, you cursed, and to the everlasting fire, depart from me, excuse me, uh, uh, <laughs> Reading back over again here. Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. See, the f everlasting fire was actually prepared for the devil and his angels. But all those people that are saying, but, 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 that are, they also say, wait a minute, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. But they did not do this. They did not do this. They did not help the least of the brethren. Which are the poor, the sick, the lame, the cripple. Oh, they say they do. You know, they do. A little bit here, a little bit there. I, you know, I've been getting some emails, and, you know, those emails were true. When I would call somebody, they were, you know, oh, wait a minute. I got his name down here. Uh, I shouldn't be doing anything for him. But that didn't happen. I called several churches in my area. Some didn't answer because they don't keep office hours. I called, uh, well, I'm not telling you the church's name. One church here in town said that they will help me out with a hundred dollars. They work on my van. Of course, I got an appointment today to take my van to a local garage to have them look at it. But they won't give me the money. They will give the garage the money, which I understand that. I just hope the garage does. And we'll wait for the money. And then I had to pick up an application now for this church here. 
Let me get some light here because I don't think you can. I'm getting a lot of shadow here. This church here now is coming up with an application for help. So I picked up an application yesterday, filled it out, took it back. I told them I won't know the amount until, you know, I go there. Because since the other church is helping me out with a hundred, they might not have to, you know, help me out with a whole lot. Especially if it's a bearing. I've, I've had three bearings replaced on my van already. Two in the front, one on the back on the uh, passenger side, which I call that the right side. They call the passenger side the left side. Anyhow, the left side, which is the driver's side, bearing on the rear, I haven't had that changed. And it's almost acting like it could be that bearing. It's a hundred, around a hundred dollars for the bearing. Another hundred for labor. That's how much it costs in the past, anyhow. Prices might maybe came down a little bit, but who knows? Cause I can't get the bearing myself. I don't have a hundred dollars cash in my hand to go and get the bearing and then take it to the garage and have them put it on. So they have to do it all through the help that I'm getting. If they want to take that hundred dollars that they're getting from that church and go buy the bearing and they wait for this church here to help me out with the rest. I don't, you know, I'm hoping, praying, I have faith because these people are supposed to be Christians as well, that uh, own this uh, um, garage. At least that's what a lady, an elderly lady that goes to the same church I go to, she had to have her vehicle repaired. And she was worried because she, again, she's on Social Security. She doesn't have a lot of money. She needed hearing aids, and she couldn't afford hearing aids. And, I mean, and she, of course, she doesn't have the, all the luxuries we have because she doesn't understand technology, doesn't want, you know, all that stuff to begin with because she's elderly and she doesn't care for it. But the thing is, what I'm getting across is she's elderly, she has health problems, she has a vehicle as well, and it needed worked on, and she took it to this garage and... Well, I guess she worked out a deal where she can, if she had so much down payment, she can make payments on the rest. The problem is, there's some people that were going to the church at the time, gave her money to help her out. So she was able to get her vehicle fixed. Now these people are no longer coming to the church. They're on their own, doing their own ministry now. And it's just, you know, it's just hard for people. There are elderly people. There are and disabled as well. Now, I know a lot, of you, a lot of you think I'm not. A lot of you think I'm faking. You can't fake an x-ray. You cannot fake an x-ray. I got my original x-rays from the hospital before they destroyed them. That shows what's wrong with my back. So, you know, you can talk 
type on your computer, whatever, all you want. Because everything that you're saying about me is a lie. You must hate me so much because of what you are always doing. Sending five catalogs now from this one place. I called them and talked to them and told them what's going on. I'm not Kirby Hensley. Enough is enough for using people's, uh, dead people's names and other people's names. Digging up my family tree on both sides of my family and using their uh, uh, other people's names from my family. Enough is enough. I am not going to stop. Preaching the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and God Almighty. Because you hate me. And you hate God. And you hate Jesus Christ. Which is the only way. The only one true way. To God the Father. I don't care. I will keep preaching whether you like it or not. It's your... It's your turn to do the right thing for once. Which I know you will not. Because you don't know how to do the right thing. You need to stop. You need to stop with your YouTube channels and your YouTube videos about me. And you also need to stop sending me junk in the mail. That I never ordered. And you need to stop signing me up for stuff I never signed up for in my emails. Because you're committing fraud day in and day out. And you act like you don't care. You don't care. I'm praying for you every day. But you act like you don't care. God have mercy on your souls. Evidently, you don't care about your souls. You don't even believe you have a soul, probably. And that's, that's the sad thing right there. You don't care that you have a soul, and you are going to lose it. You're going to be cast into the fiery pit that's made for Satan and his devils. I'm not. You are. You don't like how I'm preaching? I don't care. I'm preaching the truth. Wake up. Before it's too late. Problem is, a lot of you people don't realize it's already too late for you. Because my Lord and Savior is coming real soon. God bless you. Have a blessed day.